Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the 659 day of continuous uninterrupted Zoom session of IFPH. Today, our guest is Dr. Sridhara Kurup, Retired Assistant Director, CCR at the Central Council for Research in Homeopathy, a legend from India with more than 46 years of experience. The topic is International Yoga Day Celebrations. He is a qualified person in yoga, post graduation in home yoga. He is the most eligible and suitable person to deliver a lecture on that. In every year that the 21st uh, uh, new day, uh, June, he is going to, to be uh, celebrating since uh, 2014 that uh, it started to started already celebrating we are last uh, seven years or eight years we are uh, celebrating all over the world our prime minister that uh, um, our honorable prime minister uh, sri narendra modi is uh, gave that uh, 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 he went to the united nation uh, he gave that uh, un United Nations General Assembly, he gave on uh, uh, the year uh, 2014, September 27, he gave a speech and about the, uh, about to, to the 193 countries, 177 countries are called uh, sponsoring to the countries for a resolution and uh, established the uh, uh, 21st June as the International Day of Yoga. In this resolution, the United Nations General Assembly recognized that yoga provides a holistic approach to health and well-being, wider dissemination of information about to the benefit of practicing yoga for the health of the world population. Yoga brings harmony in all walks of life. Thus, it is known for disease prevention, health problems, and management of many lifestyle-related disorders. So, uh, what is yoga? Yoga is inevitable gift of the ancient Indian tradition. It embodies Unit, unit of mind, body, thought, and action, restraint, fulfillment of harmony between man and nature, a holistic approach to health and well-being. Yoga is not about exercise, but to discover the sense of oneness with ourselves, the world, and nature. By changing our lifestyle, and creating consciousness, it can help us to deal with climate change. Let us work towards adopting an international yoga day. While addressing the 69th session of United Nations General Assembly on September that I already mentioned, so we can see what is yoga. Yoga is essentially a spiritual discipline based on an extremely subtle science which focus on bringing harmony between mind and body. It is an art and science for healthy living. The word yoga is derived from the Sanskrit root of yut meaning to join to the yoke or to unite. According to the yogic states, the practice of yoga leads to the union of individual consensus with the universal con consciousness. According to the modern scientist, everything in the universe is just a manifestation of the same quantum permanent one who experiences this once of the existence is said to be in yoga and is termed as a yogi who has attained a state of freedom, referred to as a mukti or nirvana or 
കൈബല്യ ഓർ മോക്ഷ ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ആക്ടീവ് ദി യൂണിയൻ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ദി ബോഡി മൈൻഡ് ടു ആൻഡ് അറ്റൈൻ സെൽഫ് റിയലൈസേഷൻ ബസ് ദി യോഗ പ്രാക്ടീസ് ഈസ് ഓവർ കം ഓൾ കൈൻഡ്സ് ഓഫ് സഫറിങ്സ് ദാറ്റ് ലീഡ് ടു എ സെൻസ് ഓഫ് ഫ്രീഡം ഇൻ എവറി വാക്ക് ഓഫ് ലൈഫ് വിത്ത് ഹോളിസ്റ്റിക് ഹെൽത്ത് ഹാപ്പിനെസ് ആൻഡ് ഹാർമണി നോട്ട് ശിവ ഹാസ് ടു ദി ഫസ്റ്റ് യോഗി ഓർ ആദി യോഗി ദി ആദി യോഗി ഇൻ about 2500 years ago for the knowledge of yoga to the saptarshis that is seven uh, um, sanya uh, sages they spread to the yoga all over the world including asia middle east and south africa north africa and all other part of the world traveled all over india Uh, it is also um, saptarshi taught that all yoga that agastya muni in the india mainly the agastya muni taught to the veda uh, the yoga for us from to the it is came from to the vedas so i like to to share definition of yoga yoga is essentially a spiritual discipline based on extremely suitable science which focus on bringing harmony between mind and body i already told that yes. we, what we are telling that the uh, 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 we are the life force and we are the part of the universe force that is we may call god or any other um, force that it is there is a universal force that it will be mingling together that is called the union that is the it will dissolve that we, we will say mukti that there will not be any uh, uh, rebirth for that so obtaining to that that is called between to the mind and body joined together and uh, together and it will reach it to that stage that is the aim of that yoga practice next slide uh, according to padanjali maharshi yoga is restriction of to the practitioner of consciousness here i like to mention some of to the um, basis of yoga that there are ashtanga yoga that means eight limbs of yoga that only by learning people thought that the learning yoga means it is an exercise that the asanas it is not like that we must have to see that the uh, all this ashtanga eight limbs of yoga is called ashtanga yoga that yama niyama pranayama pratyahara asana dharana dhyana samadhi etc are the eight things i one after the another i shall explain before that i like to uh, explain about the components of yoga the yoga has been referred to as age old regarded to the continuous uninterrupted tradition of knowledge for several thousand years that is more than 2500 years it has been established on immutable theories concept techniques practices and rules which are hypothesized in various region over many a millennium fundamentals of yoga are well defined is in kalopanishad bhagavad gita and yoga sutras these fundamental principles of yoga both in theory and practice are known as classical yoga or ashtanga yoga in indian tradition the ashtanga yoga is comprised of the eight constituents of eight limbs which are very well defined in the padanjali yoga sutras they can be classified under the following three heads yogic ethics that is yama niyama i shall explain one after the another second one is the astana yoga practice that is asana pranayama and pratyahara the third is the internal or meditative practice dhyana dharana dhyana and samadhi these are the eight limbs of to the uh, astanga yoga what is yama 
it is the first step which include five abstination namely non violence that is called ahimsa truthfulness satya honesty asteya sitr continence or it is called brahmacharya non acquiescence abarigraha what is that the ahimsa or non violence see only by knowing there is no meaning that with that what we may say that the manasa vaja karmana first we must have to have a mind to do all these things then you must have to learn or uh, practice uh, to learn all these things then you must have to practice also then only there is use useful for with all these things what is ahimsa or non violence it is universal moral commandment and is ethical preparation for a student of yoga not to harm any living being by any means is the basic principle of non violence this creates an atmosphere of universal love and brotherhood and makes the one's mind pure that is the uh, non violence second is the truth the all called satya truth is universal and is the only uncon uh, only uncontroversial basis for development of self truth and love are the ultimate reality of this world and a yogi must adopt this reality is not only speech but also in routine conduct untruthfulness either in mind or in action leads to yogi away from his mission next one that is asteya or honesty to resist to the desire of using others belongings whether money thought or materials for own benefit is asteya this act of non stealing includes not only taking what is others without prior permission but also using it for different purposes or using beyond the permitted time period this also includes misappropriation misconduct misuse mismanagement and breach of trust one should reduce one's need to the minimum to achieve the ability to ward off great temptation next one is brahmacharya sector continence to live the life of celibacy to develop self restraint and to perform religious act are the basic principles of brahmacharya it does not only mean to preserve semen and remain celibate the remain to remain strictly away from sexual activities is deed or thought is the basic principle of several abstinence components of brahmacharya it has little to do with persons martial status and living a common man's household life it is open for all it is not at all necessary for one salvation to stay unmarried because one can perform marital duties solely for the creation of progeny but not for sexual pleasure and thus to remain a brahmacharya not on this is only for sexual pleasure that you must not marry and that is called brahmacharya then aparigraha non acquiescence to remain free from holding is abagraha a yogi should keep his requirements to the minimum as he does not really need many things at a particular point of time hence he should not uh, hoard or collect the things the collection of things for future needs shows to the lack of faith in god and in himself because he that is the god who is looking after the whole creation or the srishti will fulfill the meet our requirements timely by observing the habit of 
avarigraha one makes one's life very simple where there is no fear or lack of trust the life of a common man is full of mysterious disturbances agonies and frustration which keep his mind always in a state of imbalance and perturbation his mind is always calm and cool unperturbed in a state of equilibrium niyama these are the rule or code of conduct that apply to the individual disciplines in the five niyamas prescribed by the maharshi padanjali are such purity santosh contentment tapas austerity sadhya self study ishara pradinidhanam or dedication to the god what is the such or purity for our well being purity of physical body is essential at the same time cleaning cleansing of the mind of its disturbing emotion like hatred passion anger lust greed delusion and pride is essentially important the toxins and impurities of the body are removed by pranayama and asanas they not only clean the body but also tone to the entire body along with its renewation the impurities of the mind may be washed off by adopting devotion that is called bhakti where the impurities of intellect are removed or burnt off in the fire of self study that is sadhyaya purification of cleansing of the physical body mind and intellect bring to the state of benevolence or uh, uh, benevolence which banishes mental pain rejection sorrow and despair what is the basic necessity of body to keep the body and mind healthy right kind of food is necessary one should be very careful how is food is produced how it is prepared and in what way it has been consumed for a yogi vegetarian diet is essential in order to attain concentration and spiritual evolution food is to be taken to promote health to get energy and strength and for the purpose of self rejuvenation only hence the food should be simple nourishing juicy soothing and with all necessary nutrients like carbohydrate proteins vitamins minerals and sour bitter salty pungent burning heavy and unclear food should necessarily be avoided that is there are food is called satvik food rajas food and uh, tamas food that for to the yogis the satvik food is that it is a, another chapter that if i may get time that i shall tell in later classes then next one is santosha contentment santosha or contentment has to be developed when a person is greedy for something or other his mind cannot be concentrate here the caste creed and wealth are the fundamental factors of dissatisfaction among the people and that lead to conscious or unconscious conflict in such a condition mind cannot concentrate or it cannot become single minded egagra and as a result it is robbed of its peace which is not the way of tranquility truth and joy in whose absence or success or whatever kind can be achieved then next one is tapa or austerity efforts and practice of character building may be termed tapas it means to burn shine consume blaze or destroy all kind of pain with the help of inner self control energy it is a process of burning and disease that stands in the way of achieving ultimate goal of life it involves self purification self discipline and austerity and is a conscious effort to achieve the ultimate union with the divine tapas is three kinds is there brahmacharya continence and ahimsa 
non-violence or the tapas of body using such words that do not offend others, receiving the glory of Almighty. God always speaking truth without thinking of in the consequences of the tapas of speech to keep tranquil and balanced in both joy and sorrow and always have self-control are the tavas of mind. Then sadhyaya, self-study. This means self-study or education. Education is a process that brings out to the best which is within ourselves. In sadhyaya, people speak and listen themselves. Their mind and heart are full of love and respect and the noble thoughts arising from this practice are taken into bloodstream and make them a part of life and being sadhyaya changes the outlook of life. Next one is the Ishara Pranidhana or dedication to the God. Dedicating one's all will wish to the action of to the God is Ishara Pranidhana. He who has God will not face any dilemma, will not be puffed up with pride or drunk with power and will bow his head, drunk with the power and will bow his head only in worship. Conscious state is directly governed by mind and to control mind is very difficult. For that, one has to take to the shelter of God with full honesty and dedication. It is at that stage that devotion or bhakti begins. In bhakti, the mind, intellect, will, and wish are made subservient humbly to God with the pray that I am nothing and that the Almighty will take care of me. This way of bhakti will enable the person to produce in right direction of knowledge and conduct because the name of God is like the sun dispelling the darkness. When our life moon will face the sun, it will be glowing like a full moon. Next one is the asana. That people are mistaken. The asana is the um, that yoga. But all these eight, uh, all these things eight together, it is called that yoga. Asana is only an art of posture. In Padanjali's Ashtanga Yoga, after Yama and Niyama, the third limb is asana or posture. Asanas are well described in Hatha Yoga uh, Pradip, uh, Pradipika, where it has been placed first in the sequence of yoga practice. The posture in which one can sit for indefinite period comfortably is called asana, as described in Mandal Brahmopanishad Padanjali says, Stilam Sukha Asanam, which means the posture in which we can sit comfortably and steadily is called asana. Asana brings real steadiness, health, and easiness to all body parts, which ultimately brings mental equipos and peace. The asanas are three types. Meditative asana, asana providing mental tranquility, asana providing physical strength. Asana feeling in the first category are, according in the first category are practiced before meditation. They are most suitable postures for doing meditation section. The second group of asana provides total mental peace and tranquility and prevents fickleness of mind. The third group of asana is practiced to get physical strength and body power. The asanas lead to various useful physiological biochemical and mental changes in the body. These changes include loss in body weight, decreased respiratory rate, increased vital capacity of lung, increased chest expansion, decreased blood glucose level, decreased blood cholesterol level, increased blood protein level, improved functions of endocrine glands and improved mental process like intelligence, Quadrant IQ, mental quadrant MQ, also EQ, 
EQ, emotional quadrant, decreased mental fatigue and anxiety, etc. Several other significant neurophysiological and neuro humoral changes have been reported to take place following the practice of asana. In fact, health is not a commodity that can be purchased by money and power. Asanas are mean for that. They not only help a practitioner getting freedom from physical disabilities and mental distraction, but also achieve a complete equilibrium of body, mind, and spirit. Even in homeopathy, it's also the same thing. Body, mind, and spirit conception is there. Pranayama, science of breath. Pranayama is the process of yogic breath or science of breath. As stated in Yoga Sutra, Prasmin Sadi Swas Prasad Yogiti Piche Pranayama. This is pranayama is related with the prana, which means breath, respiration, life, vitality, wind, energy, or strength. The Suffix ayasa, ay, ayam, means length, expansion, stretching, or restraint. Pranayama thus means the extension of breath along with its control. Every breath has three components, inhalation or inspiration, which is termed uraga. Second, the retention or holding the breath a state where the inspiration air is held in the lungs, termed kumbhaga. The third, ex exhalation or expiration, which is called rejaga or empty, in which the air filled in the lungs is to be released quickly. This, this pose is given more time for gaseous exchanges of oxygen and carbon across the blood capillaries. In addition, it allows better Mixing of fresh air with the state residual air in the air sacs of the lung. Holding of the breath during the period of lung are filled as a cleansing and purifying effect on the residual air. See that uh, some people can stay without food even uh, um, weeks and months, but that without uh, water, you can stay one or two or even for a few days. But without air, you cannot remain alive. So the pranayama is, prana is the oxygen uh, taking in the, uh, that, that is the one of the first one in the, our life. But then pratyahara, sensual control. In, if a man has firm and rhythmic control on his sense, he may be free from several agonies caused by them. This is known as Pratyahara. There is a bondage, pain, sorrow of one's mind, indulge, grieves over the specific subject matter, and at the same time, there is a pressure, liberation, and happiness of mind is free from all. To achieve the good and uh, sacred is the ultimate aim is pratyahara. By practicing pratyahara, a person feels joy and satisfaction because he knows how to stop and where to go, what to accept and what to reject. He understands that what is better, bitter like a poison, today will become a sweet tomorrow. He remains stable in all conditions of pain or pressure, virtues or vice versa, honor or Dishonor, he remains in the state of e equality, es experiencing to the fullness of universal soul and such condition of his attitude and behavior leads to him to path of perfection. Next one is dharana, concentration. It is the sixth stage of classical Padanjali Yoga. Dharana is the concentration on a single point or a total attenuation on what is to be done at a particular attention on what is to be done at a particular moment, the mind remaining unmoved and unrefilled. It stimulates the inner awareness to integrate to ever-flowing 
intelligence and to release all tension. In fact, without concentration, nothing can be achieved. Without concentration on divinity, which shapes the control and universe, one cannot unlock the divinity within oneself or becoming a universal man. That is called the dharma. That is the concentration. Then next one is the dhyana. That is the meditation. Meditation is the practice by which there is a constant observation of mind. It means focusing the mind on one point, stilling the mind in order to perceive the self. By stopping the waves of the thoughts, one comes to understand his true nature and discover the wisdom and tranquility that lies within. With the continued practice of meditation, one can discover a greater sense of purpose and strength of will and one's thinking become clear and more concentrated, affecting the person and all his or her actions. That is called meditation. That the several types of meditations are there. The main meditation is the Raja Yoga meditation. That is, it is concentrating on, they are concentrating on mind. Then so many types of meditations are there. Uh, often a part of his body, learn to control one's own thinking and emotions such as source to subdued restlessness, calm and nerve, nerves and literally will, will himself to bring about what is best in him, to shut himself off from worry and all negative attitude. And also it will create a positive attitude. Concentrate, uh, there are different types of the uh, meditations are there. Because lack of time, I'm not going to mention because there are some doubts also must be clear. So next one is, last one is the Ashtanga Yoga. That's what, the last one is the Samadhi. Samadhi is the peak of the yogis. First, the height of the meditation is body and body sense are at rest. As if he is in the state of sleep, all of his mental faculties are full alert as if he has attained super consciousness state. In fact, in the state of Samadhi, Yogi loses consciousness of his body, breath, mind, intelligence, and ego. He lives in infinite peace, where his wisdom and purity combine with simplicity and humility. That is all. Now, if yes. uh, people are in yes, yes. the time for well, the other is yes, that, yes. More, that uh, uh, portions are there, but I am not going to further more. Okay, sir. Yes. Satriyas are there that if I may get another uh, day, I oh. shall take further more. Mudras yes, are there. Yes. Thank it's you.